Uh, welcome to Diffuse Congruence, um, the American Muslim Experience. Uh, we're recording this uh, on uh, September 7th, and uh, today we received news uh, about the passing of Osama Cannon, and um, I, I've just been sitting with a lot of emotions. I, well, I think both of us are, but uh, uh, I, I, I certainly have wrestled with the knowing that this day would eventually come uh, since his diagnosis. Uh, I mean, of course, this day can come in the life of anyone healthy uh, and completely uh, you know, well, but uh, certainly since his diagnosis. And then I had heard in the last few weeks that his health had taken a turn for the worse. So um, I just wanted to actually just use this as a moment for myself more than anyone else. So it's a little bit of a selfish in indulgence to just share my thoughts on the passing of Osama Cannon. Um, but uh, I guess before I do that, Omer, um, you know, I know that your relationship uh, was perhaps more as a consumer of the persona of Osama Cannon, but it doesn't start there. I, I think you, uh, because of your longevity here in the Bay Area, you got to see Osama uh, in the early days of Talib's, or, excuse me, of Zaytuna Institute. Um, so I'd love to kind of have you maybe kind of start us off, and then I, it'll allow me kind of a jumping point to uh, kind of come in where my uh, where our paths cross, uh, where my path crosses with Osama Cannon. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So first of all, in the Lahi in the Hirajun, uh, it's definitely a a big loss. Um, and they we knew we, we would, was coming, but still uh, tough news to hear for sure. Yeah, yeah. I I first uh, came across uh, Osama in 2002. So back in the days when you know we used to take classes at 6:31 Jackson, I was I was a uh, you know eager and enthusiastic casual student at, at 631 Jackson. I'd go whenever I could after work. And I remember seeing uh, Osama just always there, uh, very serious, very dedicated, intimidating because of that seriousness and, and dedication. But he was either translating um, for, for example, um, Sheikh Salik, I, I believe. I know I know there are other translators, like Sheikh Rami was a translator for Sheikh Salik, but I remember Osama was one of them. Or he was out there gardening. Um, and I remember one time I volunteered, and it was like no nonsense. It was like, okay, you go pick those weeds. I'm going to be over there. And, and we basically, you know, for him, it was probably a regular thing. For me, it was like, whoa, man, that was an intense <laughs> four or five hours doing, doing the garden. But he was very serious, very dedicated to the point where um, – I never, you know, because because of just that intensity, and I was a very casual student, um, I never really broke the ice with him. To be honest, he he was uh, he was he didn't have the persona he had later on with the fashion sense and kind of you know that whole thing. He was very simply dressed. He was just wearing back in the early days. He would dress very simply, just like anybody else, just like any other student. But nonetheless, just that that really strong presence, that seriousness. Um, and that look, right? The, the 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 eyes, the piercing eyes, and so forth. So I never really broke the ice with them. I was always on a "Hey, salam, how's it going?" Um, type basis. Um, and then many years later, you know, um, I kind of I kind of retreated from that from the scene when I got married. And then, of course, um, Thalif popped up popped up in our backyard here in Fremont. And then uh, right away, we knew there's something special with Thalif, right? Um, it, it had an immediate impact. This is in early 2009, I believe. And we mm -hmm. knew this, this is a really cool new thing. And it immediately had an impact. We started attending. Uh, and, and again, by then, um, you know, by then, by then it was, he was the, 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 the lead, the director there or whatever his role there was. And I was, I was more of a consumer, as you said, like a student, not, a, not even a student, just an attendee really. Right. And right. the persona just grew bigger and bigger. But, you know, despite that through the years, he was very, very friendly, very respectful, um, to, to myself, to my family, he would always say, he would sometimes say Umar Pai, right. Even though, um, you know, he wasn't desi and, and so on. He would say Umar Pai, no, not, not many people even call me that. Um, and then if he saw family members of mine, he was super respectful and, um, you know, whether it's, um, any, any family members. So just a real positive, um, interaction with him always, um, so yeah, that's that's really what I had to say. I you know I was very sad to hear the news of his 
uh, ALS diagnosis. Um, I'm, you know, and to be honest, this is, this is something else interesting. About a month ago, I had a, actually had a dream. Um, I didn't even tell you this, Barbez. I had a dream with him in it. And uh, so just, many people have had yeah. dreams with him. I, it's, yeah. it's remarkable. But anyway, sir, please, please. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was just a very positive dream. You know, he was there and it was a positive interaction. And to be honest, I thought in the back of my head, and I should, I should just reach out to him and see how he's doing. But then, then I was like, you know what, he's not going to get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, et cetera, et cetera. And I, and I ended up not, um, not right. I, I think I may have written out a note to him, but I just wow. never bothered. Yeah. So it's really? something I, again, and again, my relationship was from, from a distance, but right. um, I, have, I had a lot of admiration for him and, you know, despite whatever, you know, I, I always felt like he was super sincere. That, that's my honest, honest um, feeling. Yeah. Well, wow. Thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah. I, I had no idea about the dream and, and everything. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, wow. Um, so I guess just the facts as it were um, in terms of, yeah, kind of uh, if I can use your interaction, early interactions to kind of tell my story. So I, I mean, for, for, for one, for the listeners of the show, you know, or, or especially if you've been listening long enough, you know, that Osama Cannon was our very first guest for the show. Um, and I have to actually, uh, thank Zucky because Zucky was adamant that if we're going to do this, like, well, we, 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 we knew what we wanted the show to be, but Zucky was adamant in the sense that if we're going to talk about the American Muslim experience, who better to kind of have on our sort of maiden vo- voyage as it were, um, than Osama Cannon. So he kind of pushed me to, um, uh, break uh, kind of my comfort zone of asking, of calling in a favor, as it were. Now I've gotten used to it, so I call in favors all the time to get guests. But, you know, I, 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 I typically am kind of reticent to call in for favors. But um, I remember asking Osama, and you know, we, I, mean, we, I don't think we, we, we barely had a name to the show, certainly no episodes, you know. But he instantly agreed to do it just because I had asked and, and he knew Zucky to, 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 to as well, just the way he kind of knew you as well. Um, he knew Zucky's older brother, I think a little bit better, but nonetheless, just knowing that myself and Zucky were involved in the podcast and he was, he was all for it. And he was extremely, um, you know, um, generous with his time, with the way he opened up and told his story. And so certainly I would advise or I would recommend that show for anybody who hasn't checked it out or if it's been a while, definitely go back, especially now that we're mourning the loss of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of Osama. Um, but anyway, sorry. So now I'm telling this out of order, but um, my, my path with, or uh, yeah, my path with Osama crosses in 2010. So way after you, um, um, but I had only moved here in 2009. Um, I had heard about this place called Talif, uh, but it was way out in Fremont. And I was living in Castro Valley, which was a good half an hour or whatever away. And we had kids who were much younger. So, and uh, Talif's sort of flagship program was Sunday night. And so it was a thing called Living Right. So how am I going to make it, you know, on a Sunday night all the way to Fremont, you know, but uh, we would do it. We would make the trek Uh, either. Sometimes my wife and I would take turns so that we didn't have to take the kids or heck, we'd take the kids and, and, you know, uh, pack them in the car and and get there and wouldn't be home till like 10, 1030. But it was totally worth it because it was such a amazing experience. But um, and so I started attending Talif just like you as an attendee. And I remember. I was talking with someone else and, and, and I was talking to them, talking to him about, um, to the person, I don't remember who it was and what the exact context of the discussion was, but, um, I mentioned Dr. Sherman Jackson and his book, um, um, uh, uh, Islam and the black American. And we were having, and I, you know, I think casually was mentioning to the person I was speaking with how I'd studied with Dr. Jackson in Michigan and so on. And so Osama happened to be walking by and, he sort of grabbed me and he's like, wait, you're a student of Dr. Jackson. You study with Dr. Jackson. So, you know, up until that point, it was just Salam Alaik. You know, we, we really hadn't really connected. Uh, so he called me back to his office and then we ended up kind of just talking for hours. And that kind of began began uh, a friendship that really remained uh, all the way up until he, uh, he moved um, to Morocco um, in the last year, year and a half of his life or last couple of years of his life. 
Uh, but along the way, uh, I became a board member of Talif. Um, along uh, shortly after that, I joined the staff. I took a two-year sabbatical from my corporate job and joined Talif as a staff member. So Osama was my direct you know, supervisor. So I reported directly to Osama as the founding director and of a uh, Talif collective. Um, I was head of development, fundraising, uh, donor uh, relations, and so on. So uh, we became very, very close. Obviously, working together as colleagues. Um, and like you said, uh, Omar, you know, even though I was a subordinate, and I'm doing air quotes right now, he always treated me with. The ult, you know utmost respect because and he always called me his elder and always <laughs> called me Pervez Pai, um, even though we were very cordial, we were beyond the you know formalities of Pai and so on. But you know that was Osama, and uh, we eventually also became neighbors. Um, I ended up moving to Fremont in 2013, 2000, sorry, 2000, yeah, 2013, and uh, we were living like two streets down from each other. Our kids became very close and they would ride bikes to each other's houses. So it was, it became a neighborly thing. So, so Osama was a dear friend, a coworker, a colleague, a supervisor, um, uh, a neighbor. And in many ways, even though he was junior to me, um, you know, really kind of a mentor in, 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 in some ways and in, in, in some aspects of my life, um, you, you talked about his fashion sense and Osama was a, <laughs> was a work in progress. So, uh, but I think for those who remember him, um, certainly, you know, post, I would say 2012, 2013, I think he really got into fashion. Um, he turned me on to men's fashion and, but it wasn't just turning on, turning me on to men, men's fashion in the sense of like, wow, I, I like, dude, I, I, I dig your outfit. It was more like he, positioned a way the way a man should dress uh within the tradition of like islam and how it's rooted in the best practices of our faith tradition and rooted in um americana and the best of american tradition uh in fact i remember osama telling like osama was like you know a, a gentleman always carried a handkerchief a comb um, you know, yeah. So that was always sort of like, and always wore, yeah. Oh, oh, and always covered his hat. That was sort of the best of American tradition. And so, you know, but, and I say that only to also kind of elucidate, I think a point that needs to be made whenever we talk about Osama or Talif was that he had this uncanny ability. Uh, and I truly, I say one of a kind ability to bring together the best of American culture and tradition uh, because after all, he was an American. I mean, he was a convert to Islam. He, he came from a mixed race uh, uh, background. His father was African American. His mother was white. Uh, father was from Texas. Mother was uh, from uh, California. Uh, uh, but anyway, and, and so, you know, um, but he brought the best of American tradition and American culture and the best of quote unquote, like traditional Islam or normative Islam that he had learned after, you know, converting to the faith in 2005, uh, excuse me, in 1995. So, so, um, Osama again, had that uncanny ability to do that. And so certainly, I mean, I think my sense of, uh, masculinity, my sense of, uh, fashion certainly was informed to a great deal by my younger brother, um, Osama Cannon. So, um, you know, and that'll always be a part of my life. Um, and so I'll always carry that with me. Um, and so, Again, sorry, this is going to sound so jumbled. I mean, I have so many sort of thoughts and, and, and things I wanted to share. Um, I was also on the board. Uh, so, so 2017, uh, after a two-year stint as staff member um, and as, a, as the head of development for Talif, I resumed my corporate gig. I returned uh, sort of after the two-year sabbatical. And Osama said, well, you can, you're more than welcome to leave, but on one condition, you have to, you have to rejoin the board. I said, okay, you know, so yeah, I, I, it was hard to refuse, uh, you know, an offer that Osama made. So, um, and I, and I, and it's funny, I say that with a, with a smile because we would often also, one, among the many things we would talk about would be the Godfather. So Osama always made you an offer you couldn't refuse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he was a, it was a, he was a, it was a fan, it was a favorite film of his. And so we quoted 
God, Godfather ad nauseum. Um, but anyway, so I said, okay, fine. And I think I responded in kind. And I said, you know, just when I thought I was out, you know, you pull me, I, you know, I, I'm pulled back in. They pull me back in, which is another Godfather, Godfather reference. Uh, Omar, I know you're not a big Godfather <laughs> films, although I, I just found out this weekend that you actually read the book. So um, you, you, you kind of got one up on me there. I haven't read Mario Puzo's book. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry, going back. So I said, okay. So I rejoined the board and it was actually September of 2017 that I transitioned off uh, out of my role um, full-time as staff at Talif um, and joined the board uh, or rejoined the board. Um, and it was also that very month that Osama Cannon got the diagnosis of SALS. So, um, you know, for those who are keeping track, I mean, fast forward literally almost to the day that he must have told me because he called me the day he got diagnosed. He had just walked out of his uh, neurologist um, and he, he told me the news. Um, you know, I don't remember the day, but it was definitely September and it was, you know, so who knows. But um, and here we are on September 7th, four years later, um, you know, marking his passing. Uh, but and, and, anyway. I, and I also heard his his Shahada is in September and his- oh sorry yes yeah the, right thank you for reminding me that yeah his Shahada he would he would say his Shahada anniversary was September sixth mm-hmm. yesterday yeah and um, the birth of his eldest son uh, was also September sixth so uh, and you know he 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 leaves this earthly uh, existence on September seventh so the day after his Shahada anniversary and the birth of his son. Um, but yeah, so September was when he was diagnosed and, uh, you know, we had a lot of back and forth. I mean, you know, he was on the sabbatical and, 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 uh, um, and, you know, but as in typical Osama fashion, it was really hard to get him to fully divorce himself from his role. And he always sort of was still involved. Um, and, um, you know, unfortunately, and I'm not, I'm not here to rehash all the history, that transpired in 2017 and 2018 specifically, I should say, um, you know, certain things, certain allegations were brought to the board's attention about, um, you know, a toxic workplace and, uh, you know, Osama, uh, being, you know, perhaps not the easiest or person to work for or work with. Um, and so that was the extent of the allegations. Um, and we launched an investigation. We heard from people, from staff members, from others, volunteers who had, you know, stories to tell. And so we made the decision to essentially part ways with our founding director, which is never easy for an organization. But uh, to, uh, Osama remained through that entire process cordial um, and, you know, again, showed us the best of who he is. Uh, maintained that character. And um, I, I want to also say this sort of publicly, you know, because again, as as I'm sure some of the, those listening know, the board and Osama did separate. We did part ways with Osama. Later allegations came out that were not related to a toxic work environment, but were rather related to improprieties, uh, relationships uh, that again, I don't want to get into, but nonetheless, we knew that the decision we had made was the right decision, given all the enormity of, um, of things that did come out uh, publicly. But I will say, again, Osama maintained that level of integrity and cordialness. And um, I would also want to say publicly that Osama never held, at least, you know, from what he told us, you know, any sense of resentment towards the board. He, 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 he felt that the board made the right call based on the facts that we were dealing with. I mean, certainly, you know, I don't think he would have wanted, or he, he, you know, he didn't want things to end the way they did vis-a-vis Tatlif, the organization he started and founded and him, but nonetheless, he never resented us as board members. We certainly faced a great deal of backlash from the community that felt that the statement was, you know, ambiguous or that it left more to the imagination, but we were wrestling with wanting to maintain the integrity of this individual who had devoted his life to this organization, devoted his life to the service of the community and maintain certain confidentiality around that. And at the same time, you know, in in, in the spirit of accountability and transparency as a good nonprofit should, 
we also wanted to let people know that there were certain serious allegations that we had to take take into account and we made the decision that we did but again the integrity of the man uh always maintaining not an ounce of resentment against us uh in fact he would later continue to reach out to us and have relation you know have you know ha- ha- maintain a relationship with us on a personal level um and you know it's also telling that every person on that iteration of the board that had that very difficult decision to make of parting ways with Osama every one of us had a personal relationship with him there was someone on the board who he had given the shahada like she had taken her shahada at the at the hand of Osama Cannon in fact her conversion to Islam was at the behest and advice and counsel and talking with Osama Cannon we had a board member who was married by Osama Cannon had you know was quote unquote godfather to 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 to, to his children and, and and me as a neighbor coworker friend uh, Osama Cannon performed my youngest brother's wedding uh, right, performed the nikah of my youngest brother, which Omar, you know, and you, 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 you shared those beautiful pictures uh, today. Thank you for that. Um, and so we all were wrestling with how do we make sense of Osama and the relationship we have with him as a, on a personal level, but yet our fidelity uh, to the organization and the duties that we had to the organization. And so, again, mistakes were made, but we did the best that we could, and I will go and face my creator one day as Osama is doing today, knowing that we did the best that we could. So inshallah, may Allah accept that from us. So but anyway, I say all of that to say that, um, you know, I'm seeing the numerous posts uh, on social media about Osama Cannon and more often than, or more than once I've seen references to, you know, a mixed legacy or a troubled legacy. And I say, you know, it, it hurts me that people would even that would even employ that language when they are supposedly paying tribute or a eulogy, writing a eulogy uh, about him on social media. But I, what I, but my response to that beyond just feeling a sense of remorse as to why people would choose to do that on this occasion, I would say that what if if anything, what Osama demonstrated was human frailty that we're all human. We're all, none of us are saints. None of us are perfect beings. In fact, by, by the very virtue of the fact that we're human, we are imperfect beings. We are imperfect. We are a work in progress. We are an evolutionary. We are always in a constant state of uh, evolution and change. And so Osama is no different. And yes, he may have been a teacher, a mentor, confidant, uh, a spiritual guide for some, but at the end of the day, he was a human being and he had human frailties and, you know, as we all do. And so who of us is free of sin and free of blemish? None of us. And so, yeah, troubled legacy. Yeah, if you want to call it that, but just a human experience, man. He lived a life as a human being. And yeah. so, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Omar. I, I've no, been talking yeah. a lot. I, I don't want to turn this into a soliloquy, but, or a monologue. No, 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 I'm just listening. I mean, obviously you knew him, but you know, it's funny when you were talking, I'm like, oh, wait, I actually served on a board with him for about a year at oh, a, a very right. high school. I totally forgot about that. Uh, and of course he was, you know, like I said, uh, very pleasant throughout, but, um, you know, just being a little more like not as tight, um, not as close with him, um, still knowing him for quite some time and, you know, having a good relationship, but not being... What I, my takeaway is, you know, if he has a mixed legacy, we're all going to have mixed legacies. There's nobody who doesn't who's not going to have a mixed legacy. But I will tell you the the feeling among people, just from what I've seen, my own feeling is that you know what, that was a sincere person. That was one sincere person. Oh, God knows, right? God knows best. But to me, he seemed very sincere. And and then you have just as you as you think about him, you think about just the many facets and many positives he brought to the table. Obviously he brought the Talif collective and, you know, that American Islam and that eloquence and the fashion sense. And, and I, and like I said, the thing that sticks out to me the most is the other, right? The other right. with the young, with the old, you talked about taking your kids there, you'd go to Thalif and yeah, it was targeting converts and whatnot, but you'd see two-year-olds 
you'd see 70-year-olds. Sometimes the 70-year-olds didn't barely knew English and were immigrants. You see two-year-olds running around. I have videos of my daughter Zena crying because she 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 wants to go back to Talif when we were leaving. Like she had she felt comfortable that. there. So um, you know, I still sometimes just tease her, oh, you want to go back to Talif, right? Because there's there's a long video of her crying. But point is everybody felt comfortable there, and that goes back to his other. So yeah, um, we're all imperfect. I think he remind you know, today reminds people that we're all imperfect. Um and especially, you know, we shouldn't hold anybody to to an uh, to a certain standard that is unattainable, unattainable. Standard. And a especially our, and, and, and maybe it's a lesson to our community or a reminder to our community, especially like our imams and all, they're also human, right? Yeah. Uh, be, be, you know, don't, don't be, don't be harsh or, or judgmental on them, you know, take the good, you know, take the good. And, you know, of course, and I'm talking, there's a difference between legal and, and spiritual, right? From right. legal, leave, leave that to the, to mm-hmm. so, so that, you know, leave legal, legal. I'm talking about it on a spiritual level, right? On a spiritual level, um, you know, Imam Zaid, I think his post was, was probably the, the most, um, the, the most, the one that resonated the most where he, I he agree. basically I said, agree. you know, which is why I suffering. shared it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He, because of his suffering, you know, because of suffering in general, people, human beings are forgiven. Um, right. We believe that that's part of our tradition. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the, one of the fadilas, uh, as they say, as the prophet reminded us, like one of the blessings of this ummah was that, you know, that that tribulation or trial in this life would be expiation of one's sins. So for a man who suffered a debilitating disease like ALS for four years, um, you know, the latter days were spent, you know, on a feeding tube and breathing apparatus. So, I mean, he suffered for four years. So I sincerely believe that he was right with his Lord. Uh, and so then who are we not to have good countenance and good, a good, a good, good, um, uh, opinion of our, yeah. of our departed brothers. So, yeah. um, I, I agree. I, I agree. Um, I, I was going to say something, uh, or like, and, but I'm really, I really appreciate your thoughts. Um, but yeah, just, 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 just to sort of conclude, I, I don't want to belabor this and I, I didn't want this video or sorry, not video. I didn't want this podcast, this episode or whatever you call it to be a, this reflection to be a kind of a hot take, right? This isn't Perbez offering a hot take or, you know, cl- you know, setting the record straight as a board member. This is just a friend. This is just someone who is, a, you know, personally mo- mourning the loss of a dear friend and I'm, I'm I'm still processing all of it. So, um, but I wanted to do it um, because I felt it would be cathartic to me to do it and share the you know these thoughts and words with with the audience. Um, but um, you know, but 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 by way of conclusion, I just want to say, like you said, you know, um, yes, we're not imperfect beings. The good I truly believe outweighs any bad. Um, even when you look and examine the life and legacy of Osama Cannon, I, I, I sincerely believe that the way, and then, and then on top of that, the, 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 the ALS, suffering, right? the suffering, <laughs> the, yeah. right. The suffering. And, and, you know, you know, I'm reminded, you know, uh, sad it is to see, what is it? Sad it is to, uh, it's, it's a line from a, from a song, Omar, but I'm, 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 I'm an, I'm an old man now. I know. Um, it's, it's from losing it, but yeah, yeah. you know, it's one thing to be born blind, but it's another thing to have, you know, to, to have one once had the, had the, you know, the gift of sight and then to lose it. Osama Cannon undeniably was one of the most eloquent people you ever probably heard. Uh, and I don't mean you as in you and me, but I mean, everybody, right. Everybody yeah. who heard him spoke about his eloquence and to have, his speech taken away from him, his eloquence, the very, the very, you know, he, yeah, like, like he, he would, he joked with me early on because one of the early onset symptoms that he experienced was he, his tongue and, and, and his, uh, like he noticed a sluggishness in the tongue and he would slur mm. his speech. And he said, he's like, Pervez, man, this is my moneymaker. I mean, he would say that right. Jokingly, he, like to put it in like kind of modern parlance, like this is how I make a living by, I talk, I speak. And, 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 you know, and I'm losing it. And so, you know, it, it's one thing to, to just live a life of, you know, uh, right. Where you never have to, where you're not known as a public speaker mm-hmm. and a public persona. Um, and I want to come back to that public persona thing real quickly, but, but, yeah. but, but before I do, but to lose that, to lose what you were best known for. Yeah. Um, and then and that larger uh, than, 
it's I had to it's, Thank it was, you. I had to look it up because it's, please, well, please, you, please. You, you've probably talked about it hundreds of times. Sadder yeah. still to watch it die than never to have known it. For you, the blind who once could see the bell tolls for thee. This it's uh, losing it by Rush. By Rush, Neil Peart. Yeah, great, who, great song about about uh, aging and and uh, talent yeah. lost. That's that right. entire song is about talent lost. I mean, in fact, he actually writes about real figures. So he talks about a writer who who, who faces writer's block, and that was Ernest Hemingway. But anyway, so 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 um, you know exactly that. But um, to lose that ability that you're known for, I mean, that's a, I mean that alone, right? Imagine what that does to a human being, yeah. and what that does to weigh down on you psychologically. So you know, he was dealing with all of that, and you know, to go back to the allegations or what have you uh, of a toxic work environment, et cetera, erratic behavior. A lot of that was post-diagnosis. A lot of that was post-ALS, you know, very little of it was pre-ALS. So, so I, you know, I also want to draw attention to the fact that, you know, ALS, you know, is, 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 is a neurological disease. It, It can impair judgment. It can impair behavior. People can act erratically. So, I mean, Allahu Alam, God knows. Yeah. But the point being that to have, to see this one gifted man, the ability to speak, the eloquence that he had, the ability to reach hearts and minds, change hearts and minds, to have that taken away is is, is just an un, unimaginable challenge and, yeah. and test and tribulation. So, But go back to the idea of a public figure. I mean, the thing is, a lot of us live lives of rather anonymity, but Osama he lived a public life. Everybody knew him publicly. And so, you know, you would talk about a mixed legacy or whatever. It's a public persona, right? I mean, he changed before our eyes. He, he, he was a work in progress before our eyes. So we have to take that into account as well. But um, anyway, I just, I just want to say, you know, like larger than life, an amazing human being. I still consider him to be, you know, perhaps one of the best embodiments of uh, the bridging of, traditional Islamic values and packaged in a, uh, in an American, in an American fashion and an yeah. American embodiment of that. And so, yeah. and, and Talif is just an extension of who Osama Kenan was. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's remember him, let's honor him, all that he contributed, who he was. And, and of course, let's pray for him, for his uh, forgiveness, for, for, for him to have Jannah, um, and, and ease in the grave and on the last day. And of course, uh, in this world, pray for his family, his wife, his kids, uh, all those who cared about him who were, who were, who were mourning. Um, and, um, all our, all our, all our imams who are all, you know, who we, who we follow, but are, they're all imperfect. And let's, That's inshallah, right. they'll, may Allah give them success and, and, um, they're imperfect and they're here for a limited time. So let's mm-hmm. avail the opportunity to you mm-hmm. know, get the best of them and, and, and get as much good as we can from them. Um, yeah. if, you know, I want to close this out with actually something that Osama would often say, um, you know, whenever he would end um, like a sit or a gathering, he would make dua. And, and the last thing he would say during the dua would be, you know, let the last of our words be la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And so, I want. I would like to believe that those were the last words that Osama, you know, uttered um, as he left this earth uh, today. Um, and then finally, I, I want to also leave with a quote from Rumi that was one of Osama's favorites. In fact, it was so he loved it so much that we had a mural painted uh, at Talif with this verse. Uh, Rumi says, "Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshipper, lover of leaving. It doesn't matter." Ours is not a caravan of despair. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vow a thousand times, come yet again, come, come. And he loved that quote. And to him, it personified what his life's mission was about, was to accept others for who they were and to welcome them regardless. And that's what the space that he created um, and the content he provided at Talif and that the organization continues to do. So so honor him, honor his legacy. Um, and I don't want to make this a plug for Talif, but that's his life legacy. Let's support the work of that organization. And uh, remember the best of Osama Cannon. So thank you, Omar, for uh, indulging me. Thank you, listeners, for indulging me. Uh, you know, and as we close out, you know, let, let, let's say a fatah for our dearly beloved uh, Osama Cannon. So thank you so much for listening. 
um, you know, inshallah, we'll have future episodes uh, back at you and uh, with you. And so thank you so much for indulging us and listening to us. And uh, like I said, uh, like Omar very eloquently reminded us, let's remember him, the best of him. Let's remember his family, his, his children, uh, and all of those who benefited from him. Thank you for listening, everyone. Join us again on the next episode of Diffuse Congruence.